This looks to me like a raised Jesus, Lord of the world, directing his church. What say you? Was this the sort of thing that you would publish in a historical journal as an argument that Jesus was resurrected? Where was the expectation of a Messiah rising again from the dead? Tell me that. Because, let me you finish. You haven't let me finish my point. No, hey, no, no. Okay. Please let me no, finish no, no, my no, point. No, 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 Jesus I, made this claim in the New okay, Testament. Okay, let me finish. <laughs> I was you, I'm answering point. your question. You weren't answering you the question. You asked me my question. Okay. That was the exciting part when we arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> Want more from today's conversation? Register now and you'll receive the ebook of Bart Ehrman debating Peter Williams on the story of Jesus. And tell us who persuaded you in our survey with today's show. Hello and welcome to The Big Conversation from Premier Unbelievable, brought to you in partnership with John Templeton Foundation. I'm your host, Justin Briley. The Big Conversation is all about questions around science, philosophy, history and culture with big thinkers across the belief spectrum. Today, we're discussing the central claim of Christian faith. Did Jesus of Nazareth rise from the dead? The rise of Christianity, of course, has shaped the modern world, but are its historical origins best explained by naturalistic means, or is the explanation the first followers gave, that Jesus had risen from the dead, still a plausible option for people today? Well, Bart Ehrman is a well-known New Testament historian whose books include Misquoting Jesus, The Triumph of Christianity, and Heaven and Hell, A History of the Afterlife. Bart is an agnostic. He doesn't believe in the miraculous claims of the Bible, including the resurrection of Jesus, but he's always happy to discuss it with those who do. One of those is Justin Bass, a New Testament scholar who's taught at various institutions, including in Jordan in the Middle East. Now, Justin is a Christian, and in his book, The Bedrock of Christianity, he argues there are a number of bedrock facts concerning the death and resurrection of Jesus agreed upon by the majority of New Testament scholars. And today, he's going to be explaining why he believes the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth is the best explanation of both scripture and history. So, Justin and Bart, welcome along to the show. Thank you. Nice to be here. I hope it won't be too confusing for you, Bart, having two Justins in front I of you today. I am feeling that I'm being ganged up on. <laughs> but it's okay. Bearded I can, Justin I can handle it. <laughs> and unbearded Justin. You can see the difference. Um, you guys have met before, haven't you? Do, do you remember your last outing with each other? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. We, we, we had, we had a, a public debate. Uh, and what was it uh, on? I don't know. What was it on? Did the historical Jesus claim to be divine? Oh, ah, right. I picked it, so, so I would remember. Okay, yeah, she would remember. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was well, great. I know which side we took. <laughs> yeah. I didn't convince Bart. I didn't convince Bart. Well, I tried my hardest. You've got a second go. You've got yeah. a second chance. This is round now. two. Here we go. Exactly. And, yeah. and hopefully there won't be a round three. This will be the day of salvation <laughs> for Bart. Well, I'm hoping that for you, too. We shall see. I can see this is going to be a fun one. No, but it's a serious topic, you know, yes. and this is an issue that obviously is at the center, as I said, of the Christian faith. Um, we've heard your story before, Bart, um, but essentially you, you did at once believe these claims. Names, but obviously, through a, through a process of time and various uh, experiences, decided actually, ultimately, you believe the Bible is ultimately just a work of human history and not of divine origin. Obviously, Justin, you've come to different conclusions yourself. Um, I think, in a sense, because you're making the positive case today for the resurrection, we'll start with you, Justin, if that's okay. Can you just give us a, a thumbnail sketch of how you make the case for the resurrection in, in your book? Yes, yes, uh, and thanks again for having me on. Thanks for doing it again with me, Bart. This is, this is really great. Uh, as Bart well knows, New Testament scholars today and over the last 250 years of biblical you know, scholarship disagree on tens of thousands of things. But what they agree on, I think, is fascinating, and I think you know, we should focus on those things. We should, you know, these are important things to look at, you know, and I think it's valuable to know what, what is it they agree on, what's kind of the common ground. And so my book is, is, is basically the, 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 the goal is to capture where that agreement is among scholars. And to put it simply on, the, on these issues, it's Paul. So Paul being a bedrock eyewitness uh, that he saw, believed he saw the risen Jesus. This has not been denied across the board um, throughout history. Um, when it comes to his sources, when it comes to Paul's early letters, when it comes to traditions that he is quoting within the letters, uh, Paul, it, it's, it's agreed upon that he wrote those letters, it's agreed upon that, that he's getting these traditions from early on, probably when he hung out with Peter for two weeks, with James, the Lord's brother. And, and then we get uh, bedrock facts that I focus on concerning Jesus' death and resurrection that come forth from uh, those bedrock sources. And those are namely these. 
uh, Jesus's crucifixion. Then we have the the claim, the actual just claim of Jesus's resurrection. I, I think that alone is just an innovative, unparalleled, unique idea that had not been known. No, nobody was expecting a resurrected Messiah, let alone a crucified Messiah, in the middle of history. The third is the appearances, which largely are cataloged in 1 Corinthians 15, one of these early traditions. And, and, uh, and then the fourth would be, uh, I, I could use uh, the great title from Bart's book, The Triumph of Christianity. So the fourth is basically how the early Christians starting in Jerusalem and uh, the very place where Jesus was crucified went on, launched from there, and went on to transform the Roman Empire, went on to transform many nations, laid the foundations of Western civilization, and ultimately still today, the largest religion on the planet. And all the Pew Research shows throughout the 21st century is going to continue to be. We have a, a religious future, a religious landscape of the world in our future. So, so that's kind of some, some yeah. bare facts it's, and, it's, and sources to lay out. It's a helpful one. Now, we, we're not going to cover in depth all of those facts on this conversation. And I, and I thought we might sort of specifically focus in on maybe the, the last two that you mentioned, particularly the appearances and the rise of Christianity. But let's just briefly touch at least on those others, the, the fact that Jesus died and the claim of the resurrection. Now, presumably, you don't contest that both of those things happened, Jesus's death on the cross, but and indeed that people claimed that the Mess a Messiah had been resurrected in history. Um, do you want to add any Well, not much. I mean, that? no, it's absolutely, I think, uh, you know, I mean, the, the problem with saying that every historian agrees on something is problematic, you can't really... I say virtually all, virtually all. Yeah, because, of course, there are people who deny that Jesus existed, and sure. uh, the weird thing is that there's <laughs> and some I mock, of the, I mock them well in the book, <laughs> and I quote you. The, the, the strange thing is some of the people who think that Jesus didn't exist does do think that he was crucified. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's in an the oddity. Heavens. In the heavens. Yes, <laughs> the heavens. you're right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I know so, who you're no, talking about. I think, I think uh, just about every historian who's really worth their weight would, yes, absolutely. I mean, they'd say more things about Jesus but they, that they would agree on, but they certainly agree that he was crucified, and they certainly agree that, agree that afterward the disciples claimed he was raised from the dead. Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, we've got a measure of agreement to start with. And, and to I God suppose, be the glory. I suppose what we, 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 we want to know is ultimately— how do we put these facts together? And I think that means probably just sketching out a little bit more about, well, why don't we start with the appearances, Justin? So so t tell us about these appearances. Let's find out where Bart agrees or disagrees with you concerning the nature of them and, and what was reported, and, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, thanks, Justin. I think here's a way to think about the appearances. I love Acts 17. I'm sure Bart loves this chapter, and one of my favorite chapters maybe in the entire New Testament, where Paul goes to Athens and he's preaching on the Areopagus. But before that, it actually says that Paul was interacting daily with those who happened to be there in the marketplace and on the streets. And so here, here Paul's a street, street preacher, and I just love the idea of him engaging with pagans. And I, and I like to imagine, you know, what, how did Paul engage with them? You know, what was the content? We're not told the content of those conversations. And so I like to think, when, you know, in light of the appearances, I think the appearances probably would have been one of the things that he would have presented to a pagan as evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. He probably would have said something like, hey, you know, Jesus appeared to me, and I hated him. I, you know, I believed he was cursed of God on the cross. You know, I, I believed that, you know, he needed to be, his, his movement needed to be wiped out. I was on my way to arrest Christians, and ultimately, he appeared to me, and, and he loved me, and he forgave me, and he can forgive you. And then maybe the pagan was kind of like a Bart Ehrman skeptic and, <laughs> and said something like, oh, well, why should I believe you, Paul? And Paul said, well, what about Peter? Peter was his chief disciple, and Jesus appeared to him. I can introduce you to him. And what about uh, James, his brother? And what about uh, a group of disciples that ultimately were with Jesus for three years, that he appeared to them multiple times? And also uh, 500 people even uh, Jesus appeared to at one time. And hundreds of them, I've met many of them, hundreds of them are uh, still alive, and you can go and, and investigate and, and talk to them about what it was like to see Jesus. I mean, I like to just imagine sure. that it was something yeah, like yeah. that. But, you know, I find that compelling, you know, and I think that, you know, that kind of layout is what Luke means in the beginning of Acts when he, when he refers to the convincing proofs. Mm. He says there were these convincing proofs, tekmerios, this, this great Greek word that was used for irrefutable thing, irrefutable statements in rhetorical uh, Greek documents. And uh, these convincing proofs were probably the appearances, and I think that that really has been yeah. what what and, the and to that what, extent what, that's been what's been convincing to Christians throughout yeah you know the and, last two thousand years. And your contention is that most New Testament historians, be they Christian or not, agree that 
these claims happened that people said that they had seen the risen Jesus or met the risen Jesus. Well, yeah, let me get specific because I get specific in the book. So, so there's actually, by my count, 13 appearances of Jesus, four individual appearances uh, to to individuals and uh, nine to groups, uh, nine groups. Um, But four of those, the the four individuals, that's the ones probably we'll discuss here. The four individuals are uh, the ones that are pretty much bedrock. Uh, virtually all will accept that uh, Jesus appeared to, or, or uh, Peter believed Jesus appeared to him. Uh, James, the brother of Jesus, believed he appeared to him. Uh, Paul be- obviously uh, believed he appeared to him. And then uh, we can bring in Mary Magdalene because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Bart, uh, he can correct me if I'm wrong, but believes Mary Magdalene also had that experience. She's, she's uh, uh, accounted for in all four Gospels, being the first to actually witness the risen Jesus. So that so so those four would be kind of the bedrock yeah. uh, eyewitnesses. Well, well, why don't we stick with the, those specific ones and and get your take on that? But um, so, to what degree do you agree that that at least people claimed to have seen the risen Jesus? Um, I, yeah, I think it's probably right. I, th- I mean, Paul certainly. Paul um, Paul tells us that he he did. The problem with these others, of course, is they don't tell us that. Uh, so we don't have, you know, Peter didn't leave us writings where he said, I saw Jesus. James didn't leave us writings. We don't know who the 500 were, none of this. So what historians tend to do, of course, is to examine their sources of information. And the most important thing is to know what the sources are, uh, to determine whether they uh, um, are, uh, are reliable or not, uh, to, and to see what they say. I mean, so we don't, we, we, we infer, that pr- I, th- I think that, C- that Peter probably did say that he saw Jesus, and I think James probably did. I don't know about the 500. They come out of nowhere in, in 1 Corinthians 15. There's and no Mary Magdalene? Um, well, we don't have anything from her either, obviously. I know, so, but do you believe that she had an experience? Um, yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, and, so I believe, and I believe that um, I believe that in a lot of religious traditions, you get reports like that. Uh, and so my, my issue with, um, with this kind of bedrock thing is whether uh, it's appropriate to consider these kinds of claims outside of other claims for other religious figures. Mm, mm. Do, we, do we treat them equally, or do we provide a kind of a, do we say, well, it's, it's more likely true because it's in the Bible, and less likely true if it's in the Mormon tradition, or if it's in the Muslim tradition, or if it's in ancient Greek and Roman mythology, or not just mythology, ancient Greek and Roman history. And so do you give equal weight to everything? And if so, then how do you, why is it that you prefer these witnesses to the others? Yeah, Justin. Great question. Uh, what is the evidence? You know, so, so my, my question would be, what is the evidence? You brought up Islam, you brought up Mormonism. Well, in Islam, this only supernatural really claim is to Muhammad. That's one you know, one eyewitness. And I agree with Deuteronomy. We shouldn't trust anything unless it's at least two or three witnesses. So we have four that you agree with, you know, in Christianity. When it comes to Mormonism, again, Joseph Smith is the only person to say that Moroni <laughs> appeared to him, and he, he says Jesus and God the Father and a lot of other strange so things. I'm not sure, Justin. But only you... one person, o- only one eyewitness in both those cases, both those religions you brought up. But right. I'd like to hear the evidence. Well, for I don't. The Greek I don't know. Roman. I don't know if you've studied Mormonism very much. Oh, I've studied a lot. There are eleven eyewitnesses, and they to, all to the golden plates. Yes. Yeah. So yes. we're going to compare and golden plates f- to the resurrection of Jesus. No, I'm, I'm just saying if you're a historian, yeah. and what you're doing is you're saying we're going to trust eyewitnesses. Okay, I'm fine with them seeing golden plates, but what does that? What does that? Four tell of us? them say they saw Moroni give them to him. Four saw him. Some of half who of, actually half of signed them, affidavits. Half of them left the faith. They left. No, they, they didn't. They left. Joseph they Smith. left Joseph Smith. Well, they, they but they continued. Yeah. But when they abandoned Joseph Smith, they continued to say that they saw Moroni. But, so, do you credit those? Okay. Well, that's still that would only be three. But 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 no, to but abandon it, Joseph Smith. Joseph five. Smith is the foundational it's, prophet. It's four plus Joseph Smith. That's five. I'm just saying, are you being impartial? Or are you saying it's more likely because okay, well, these well, are biblical witnesses? Well, okay. Well, In those well, cases, by the way, we actually have their testimony. Okay. And it's within a hundred years. Yeah, but but, but so it's good with, enough. With the New Testament, you don't have Peter's testimony, but or, but what or it, James's testimony, okay. or for the five hundred, or so you don't have. For, you've got Paul. But what we have is good enough to convince you. For, for, for the New Testament eyewitnesses, you've already agreed that, I, that Jesus, this is exactly my point. Jesus appeared to them. So, exactly so, my so point. Maroney, I agree they claimed it. But, but let's stick with. But Maroney. that isn't proof that it happened. Right. And Who that, else has Maroni appeared to other than those people in history? We're talking about a particular event. Was Jesus raised from the dead? And a particular. But event? other things can support 
a, another event, right? So, so I'm, if Jesus is appearing to people, for example, all throughout history, if we have, I would. That's we have a separate people, argument. Okay. So I think we have to take one argument at a time because oh. if you take, if you just start piling on arguments, we have to consider each of those arguments in turn. Okay, but I'm giving. So my, well, I'm just giving you my reasoning that I why Maroney's not convincing. To I understand, right. but I don't think you've listened to my case here. Okay, you are basing everything you said. Not basing everything. You said the bedrock. We're starting with appearances. This isn't my only argument. You said the bedrock is Paul, because Paul gives us the information about Cephas and James. Correct. I, I said I said Paul is the bedrock in the sense that the vast majority of scholars agree when it comes to Paul. How That's many, what I mean by how bedrock. many ancient Christian writings do we have by somebody who says in those writings that he saw Jesus directly? Paul. But, Thank but, you. Oh, well, well, but how we many have, do we have? We have Peter. For, I, I would say Peter wrote first, first and second Peter, and second Peter, Jesus. I mean, Peter says that he saw. So the transfiguration. Uh, the transfiguration, exactly. That's not the resurrection. Okay. Paul, so you've but got John Paul. saw the risen Jesus, at least in heaven, in Revelation. Are you you're counting that as a historical source? Of, of seeing something, of seeing Jesus again. That's in another, that would that would contribute to the argument. Again, that's the point. That these things go back okay. to let me try again support because the I original. I, I want us to be clear what we're talking claim. about. You have nothing beyond be those clear. three witnesses with Moroni. Okay. Nothing. Let, let me let me finish. Okay. You're saying that Paul gives us the evidence for himself. He saw Jesus, but none of the others. You think Peter wrote First and Second Peter, and okay, but that's that would be two. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that in the case of Maroni giving Joseph Smith the plates, we have four. So if the idea is that you trust eyewitnesses who who swear to what they saw, and that we're doing this impartially, no, no, no. okay. We're doing this impartially as historians. In other words, we're not, yeah. it's not, we're not trying to back up our faith. We're not trying to prove that we're right about something. Historians don't do that. Historians try to figure out what happened in the past, mm. and they evaluate their sources. Mm. So what I'm saying is, if you're going to take the sources that agree with you, and you say that they're probably right, be, not because they agree with you, but because they're reliable sources, because you've got Paul and you've got Peter, say. Mm. Okay, well, I've got four people from Moroni giving the plates. And these people are highly religious people. Who, the religiosity was never questioned. I am not saying that I think that it happened. Mm -hmm. I don't think it happened. Yeah, for good reason. But on, your, on the way you're mounting an argument for Paul and Peter, you, I don't see how you can exclude the argument for Maroney. Well, let, let's hear from Justin. So essentially, Justin, is the question here, is that better evidence that the resurrection claims of these first followers of Jesus are better evidence than other claims from other religious traditions like Mormonism and so on, where they also claim to have been eyewitnesses to something miraculous. Exactly. And 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 what, what I was saying with the, the when it comes to the four eyewitnesses, one of them is Joseph Smith. No, no, no. There's four in addition to Joseph Smith who claim they saw him. So there's okay. five. Okay. Okay. But, well, regardless, but I, I guess I want to hear why you, it's, if you it's do multiple, regard them as different in some way to the because Mormons. Because they're claim. claiming a supernatural being named Moroni appeared to them. Okay. And so who else then has this Moroni figure appeared to? Because there's been other people that have claimed supernatural things have happened. But see, one of the things that I would say, well, who, who else has they appeared to? Right. Okay. And, and Moro who else has Moroni appeared to? Well, that, other so, than those so four. Now, now, I just want you to agree that's a separate argument now. Yeah, but you it contributes. So let me... I build a case with exactly, multiple arguments. I get it. It's not just one. So when it comes to corroborative evidence of later witnesses, what about the angel... What about the uh, Mother Mary? Mm -hmm. Now, Mary appears regularly to people. It's completely well documented. Thousands of people claim this happens. Um, and um, I'm going to assume that since you're not Catholic, you don't think these appearances happened. I'm open to the evidence, and I do think some of the stories okay, of, so what of Mary think of is evidence? compelling. I think some of the stories is compelling. You think she does appear to people? But I think what the issue no, no, with— No, do you think she appears to people? No, I don't. I, I don't know. You just said the evidence was compelling. Well, I said it's, 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 you know, it's something to look into. I'm saying it's enough to look into. Why don't you look into it? This would be well, very I, important. I have, I have looked okay, into it. Okay, so— but, but let me answer. I, I think it lacks the unexpectedness. So, so it makes, oh. and, it, and, it, and it normally happens in Catholic context. No, no, this is completely wrong. It no, no, no. Not, well, not, let, 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 let's let Justin finish his point. It normally happens in Catholic contexts. Okay. Okay. And, and so people who are already Catholic, yes. who expect, you know, they pray to Mary regularly, 
They expect saints to, to that they pray to saints. They expect this kind of thing. And it's co- happened in only, you know, a handful of type of, of situations that, that have actually been confirmed by the church. But, but I ask you, if Mary is actually appearing to people, would that support the resurrection or not support the resurrection? No, I'm saying that you have better... No, answer ev- that question. Mm-hmm. I will answer it by telling you that we have better evidence for Mary appearing to people, many groups of people in the modern period, than we have for Jesus appearing to people in the modern period. Okay. By your criteria, that would mean that it's more likely that Mary is showing up. By your criteria. By and my criteria, neither one happens. Okay, but if Mary is appearing to people... Does it more support the resurrection or not? If she, um, yes, if Mary if Mary is showing up to people, then okay. that would support. The so resurrection. your example to parallel to kind of thwart I'm, the evidence for the resurrection actually would support the resurrection. No, no, no. You're not understanding my argument. I'm saying that you. But are, that's true, right? What no, I just it's said not, is true. No, you're not. Understanding. You just admitted that. You said if Mary had, had is appearing to people, and you think there's a lot of evidence for it. I don't think so. I think it lacks the unexpectedness. The 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 apostles, these people like Paul, Peter. Mary were in no way expecting Jesus to appear to them in no way. Right. So, so, pe- so Catholics who expect that can have an expectation for this type of thing, it makes sense why it would, why it would happen. So you have you it, so the but, arguments you know, the problem for the, is for the, you're, you're arguing about four three that we or four about things at once. You're arguing three or four things at once. I don't think you've read the literature on Mary because in many many oh, I've read a lot of it. Yeah, Laurentine. Yeah, then you know full well that many times it's not uh, expected. So, um, because if you've read the literature, so... No, no, of course it's expected. That's the point. No, then you in, haven't read the literature. No, well, in there that, are in many testimonies context, of people who are not, who don't expect it and can't believe it. Yeah, but they know about Christianity. They know about people appearing How to many people. people. They know about the resurrection of Jesus. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That, and is that different the, from they're Jesus in showing the Christian up to people? worldview. Yeah, well, 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 where was the expectation for, uh, this for is, Jesus This, this is a key, key part of what you <laughs> You did mean discuss by people who knew him? <laughs> yeah, what was the expectation? <laughs> but Where's the expectation for Mary? They're not expecting her to show up, and she does. But they're in a worldview that could, that they allows are too that. In a worldview, no, they're in an apocalyptic where, where, okay, worldview where, that expects Where was the Messiah? Where was the expectation of a Messiah rising again from the dead? Tell me that. That isn't the that isn't what generated the uh, the appearances. They thought they saw Jesus afterwards. Of course, because he actually then appeared con- to them. But, then but, but, they but, concluded but, he was the Messiah. But if he didn't appear they to them like you believe, they weren't expecting the Messiah to rise. How did they expect? I, well, then how did they? And they weren't expecting Mary to appear. Okay, then how did they believe Jesus appeared to them? They saw him. Okay, so What's, what did they see? Well, how do we know? What, what, what do they see when they see Mary? You don't think they see Mary. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I think some of the evidence for the Mary see? is they saw something. Well, I think they saw yeah. something with Jesus, too, of course. Yeah. I've never but, 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 against But that. that's the thing. It led them to say something that was completely unexpected. Yes. So I think, it, I think it's compelling so evidence can I just, that for, for, it because actually you is guys the are raised Jesus. Ten to the dozen here. And I just exactly. want to, for, for, the, for the sake of the, the viewer or listener, I just want to be really clear on this point that you're making at this point, Justin, because there's a lot of different points being thrown out here. But but it's that you, you say that the idea of a resurrected Messiah who had been crucified and resurrected was completely unexpected in exactly. that Jewish and culture. Artigas. And and therefore, is what you're essentially saying, it's unlikely they would have made something like that up. Yeah. There had to be some kind of experience well, that came behind that claim because it was such an unexpected claim. Whereas, I think what I understand you saying appearances of the virgin mary although they may not have been expected in that moment or whatever by the people right. experiencing them there is a general expectation among in catholicism that that sort of thing mm-hmm. happens and therefore it's not it's, so it's, hard it's to believe the that, that yeah. it's so been I'd, generated so, so where did they get the okay. idea so i'd like to, ex- okay. I'd like to respond Please. To that, I, I just wanted to make sure we got that yeah, really no clear, i think but, it's a good okay. it's a good clarification okay. because okay. i think that's absolutely right okay and i think it's what happened with the followers of jesus as well okay go on they did not expect a messiah to be raised from the dead there was no expectation that a messiah was going to die and raised from the dead so they didn't expect that the question is what happened to generate that belief mm-hmm. my view is it's absolutely right that Peter, probably, Mary, probably, Paul, certainly, I would say, thought they saw Jesus alive afterwards. There, something happened to them to make them think that Jesus was alive. It's not because they were expecting the Messiah to rise from the no, dead. No, it wasn't. Right. What we don't know is who else had these experiences. What we know is that there were claims that other people did after the first people claimed it. Okay. And so once, once you have a follower of Jesus like Peter say, I saw the Lord, 
It's not implausible. In fact, it, others start saying, oh, I saw him too. So, so that's not so it's the scenario. same thing with Mary. It's exactly the same thing. And so my point is, is not that that proves that Mary was raised from the dead or anything. My point is that if that's the kind of argument you want to make about Jesus, you can make it about other people. That is just as, but, but just is, as plausible. Is, is the historical issue here then that you think that this claim that the Messiah had been raised was kind of a post facto kind of, oh, yeah. uh, sort of rationalization of yeah, these they experiences they had. They thought he was the Messiah before he died, in my, my judgment. Right. So they did think he was the Messiah. And they weren't went, expecting him to die. Right. He died. One of them, two of them, three of them said, I've seen the Lord. And then they had to figure out, well, how, how does that work? Uh, and it must mean, if, if, he's, if he's alive again, it must mean that God's raised him from the dead. But there were other— These are apocalyptic Jews— Apocalyptic Jews, the only way they can imagine life after death is an embodied existence. They don't believe the soul lives on after death. These are Jews. Jews believe that the body and soul are one thing, and that afterlife, if there is an afterlife, it's body and soul. No, so but, but, that if they see Jesus alive afterwards, it must mean that his soul has come back into his body. How does that happen? It can only happen when God does it. Okay. God has raised him from the dead. Once they say they raised him from the dead and they already knew he was the Messiah, that's when they start saying okay. the Messiah was raised. Quick response and we'll go to a break and then we'll catch. I was just going to say, but there's other categories that, that they could have, as Jews, thought of. The Maccabees died horrible deaths and they believed they lived on, exalted in the heaven. And, they, you know, you have, you have many other examples of the, the, this kind of disembodied continuing to live on, but they will rise again at the final resurrection. But what the early Christians said is that Jesus had risen again now. The resurrection had already begun. Bart agrees with that. But where did that idea come from? That's the unexpectedness. Yeah, it came from it's apocalypse completely unexpected. Uh, so right, right. They, but but they, you're saying they put it together. You're saying they just, they're the geniuses who put this innovative, unparalleled idea that has changed the world that all goes back to the brain of Mary Magdalene? I don't, I'm changing the world. has nothing to do with it. The issue is, what does an apocalyptic it Jew... It did change the world, though, right? What does an apocalyptic Jew think if they see somebody who had died, who's alive now? Now, when you see your grandmother in your bedroom two weeks after she died, typically today, this happens a lot, one out of eight people in our country have a vision of a deceased loved one and are convinced they're alive again or that they're alive. In our context, we believe that the body and the soul are separable, and the soul lives on afterwards. So when you see your grandmother in your bedroom, as one out of eight people, not necessarily your grandma, but some, some beloved one, um, typically what you think is their soul's gone to heaven and they've come down to visit me, because that's our mentality of an afterlife. But you <laughs> Apocalypticists don't have that they don't have that view. Their view is that if somebody's alive after they died, it has to be a resurrection because the soul doesn't exist outside the body. So when they see Jesus, he's got to have a soul back in their body, which means God has raised him from the dead. That's the first thing they know, and they don't have any theology about it. It's just, oh, my God, he's come back from the okay. dead, and then they work quick, it out. Quick response, and we'll go to our break. No, the, 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 Josephus, for example, definitely believes souls exist He's not an outside. apocalyptic Jew. Well, well, why he's, he's anti-apocalyptic. If you, I don't know if you've studied Josephus. Okay. Josephus is famously anti-apocalyptic. We're talking about apocalyptic Jews. He, Bart assumes that they just saw something, but he hasn't explained to us what they saw. And whatever they saw changed their complete worldview. I don't know what you see and, when you see your grandmother either. Okay, but I definitely don't say she, she's raised from the dead. You say she's still alive. Well, but she's still dead though, right? In Jesus' case, my point is— if, in our, No, if, in our case, if, you, you, if you're going to use that parallel, in our case, when we see someone in the afterlife, yes, we think they're still alive in heaven, but we say they're dead here on earth. We say their body Th that's is That's not dead. what the early Christians said. That's right. They they're, said Jesus had risen from the dead. Right. So you need A to listen— A crucified to, man had risen from the dead. Yes, you need to listen to why that is. We say their body is dead and their soul is alive because we do believe in the difference between the body and the soul. Apocalyptic Jews did not. They could not say that his soul is still living because he can't, his body can't be alive unless his soul comes back into it. They don't have our view of the separation no, of body. No, I, I disagree. With uh, you. Well, All, look, we're going to take a we're, we're going to take a break there. Really? We're yes. going to take a break. Okay, yes. Tell me some. I'm going <laughs> to take a break here, and we are going to just take a quick break, 
and we'll come back to this. We can keep going on, on the <laughs> appearances. Will, will. Uh, or we can, uh, it might naturally segue into the next bedrock fact that Justin has, which is this rise of Christianity okay. itself, which you think was unique, this claim being made, uh, you know, unlike other Jewish revolutionary movements, G the Jesus movement was different to those. So, so we'll talk about that. We're talking here for the big conversation about the central claim of Christianity that Jesus rose from the dead. My two guests are Bart Ehrman and Justin Bass. We'll be back in just a moment. Enjoying the conversation? Tell us who persuaded you in our survey. Plus, register now and you'll receive the ebook of Bart Ehrman debating Peter Williams on the story of Jesus. Welcome back to The Big Conversation. We're talking with Bart Ehrman and Justin Bass today, asking the central question, did Jesus of Nazareth rise from the dead? Now, just in that last section, Bart, you were sort of obviously going at it with Justin there as to whether this constitutes evidence for a resurrection or whether it's just a sort of post hoc rationalization by apocalyptic Jews of the fact that they had some kind of an experience. Now, what do you say those experiences were? They said it was of a physically resurrected Messiah. What do you say they, they probably actually experienced from your perspective? Um, so we, we have lots of records, of course, of people being seen after they're dead. Uh, it happens, as I was saying earlier, it, just, just today it happens for one out of eight people. They see something and they assume they think it's that person or they hear or they touch. They can feel them and all sorts of experiences like that. And throughout history, there have been all these thousands of appearances of Mother Mary. And there, uh, we have eyewitnesses to Romulus being raised from the dead. People saw him after he died. Apollonius of Tian. We have, you know, we have all. So in every instance, you do have to ask. Of course, the historian wants to know what really happened. And in most cases, all you can do is come up with options. We don't, there's no way of knowing what they saw, um, partly because they don't tell us. In this case, we only have one person who actually said he saw Jesus, and that's Paul, but he doesn't actually say what he saw. He says that God revealed his son to me, and he says, I saw, I saw Jesus, but he doesn't give us any details, so we don't, we don't know. Uh, it, but it's quite easy to come up with a list of things that have led to the, that kind of claim over the centuries and still led today. Some people have a dream. They think that, you know, that they were awake when they saw it. Some people have hallucinations. Um, some people see somebody who looks similar and they mistake him. Somebody sees something at a distance. I mean, there, there are, so what happened in the case of, of Peter or Paul, I, I, we, we can't say. Uh, just as we can't say for any of the others. And but, so that's but my point. you don't think they were just inventing it. They, I don't they think had so. some kind of an experience. Some people think so. But, but, but so, not the one that they claimed to I have. I really had don't think Paul was making things up. I right. just don't. Yeah. I don't think okay. he was lying about right. it. He and, really saw it. He saw Jesus. Yeah. And I'll just add, you know, Bart says this is happening all the time. Where does someone project an enemy apparition? What, what oh, it happens sometimes. If you feel guilty, for example, if you feel guilty about what you've done to somebody leading to. Give me to an you, example. Um, well, if you read the psychological literature on uh, visions, you actually find a good bit of it. I Anything mean, specific? Well, they aren't names that you would know. They're just people. I mean, yeah. they're just people, you yeah. know. The, Pretty sure. You, you Not did, in the literature. You, Not in the literature. No. Okay. Well, I suggest you there, read it. <laughs> there is no projection of enemies in the literature. Dell Allison would... would, would yeah. So um, what I'd say is that some people have hypothesized that, that uh, Paul felt very guilty, or that, that Peter, sorry, Peter felt very guilty about his denial of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that he started out, you know, and so because of his guilt, he saw something. It's, it's very common. One of the most common reasons for seeing a bereaved loved one is because you felt like you mistreated them before they died, and the guilt creates a. Mm. And so, but again, that d doesn't guarantee saying an unparalleled so claim saying, of resurrection of a Messiah that was crucified. He and, could have felt like he forgave him, but not, it doesn't mean he, he would have and, said that. And not only that, but I've never said it did, and so that isn't my claim. Um, <laughs> you and said so, that what's what caused Peter's claim. Peter did not. He didn't have, claim Jesus rose from the dead. Okay, what I've been saying is, mm -hmm. G Peter did not claim that the Messiah got raised from the dead the second he saw Jesus. What he thought was Jesus had come back to okay, life. Okay, you're saying he, he figured it out as an apoc apocalyptic Jew. I, I'm, I'm going with your argument, yeah. But, but Paul, how does Paul imagine right, I was a getting to that. crucified man I was getting to that. Uh, rising from the dead that he hates, that he thinks cursed by God, appearing to him? I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Okay, go ahead, Bob. Um, so, Paul did not get this information from Peter and James. Paul was persecuting Christians before he ever met Peter and James. 
So he knows the Christian claims already. There have been a lot of uh, psychological analyses about what might have happened to somebody who feels guilt over what they're doing to these people that would generate a vision and to have a conversion. As you probably know, there are instances in which people who are enemies of Christ have visions in which, in which they get converted. And so okay. Paul would be in that category. Yeah. Okay. But, but again, Sundar Singh, by the way, would be a great example of this. This was a, an Indian that became a great missionary. He was burning Bibles, he was persecuting Christians in the early 1900s, and ultimately he had a vision of Jesus, and he, and he was transformed like Paul. But again, that happened after the Christian claim has already been made. Yes, yeah, so, 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 Paul. Paul, so did Paul. Yeah. That's my point. It's exactly the same. So you can't say that it doesn't happen to enemies. So you think he understood Because you just the, gave the example of an enemy where it happened. So you think he understood the Christian claim clearly as he was persecuted. He understood that they were saying Jesus got raised from the dead, absolutely. Okay. And then Why he else was he persecuted? And then he imagined on the Damascus Road... I didn't say he imagined, imagined anything on the Damascus Road. Well, what, what happened on the Damascus Road? I just said that there are lots of options, and we don't know because he doesn't okay. tell us. Okay. Well, One he said thing, he, saw, he saw the Lord Jesus. That's what he said. He I said he saw the Lord Jesus. Okay, where did he see him? When did he see him? How did he see him? How close was he? Mm -hmm. Did they talk? Did well, they spend a week together? Seeing him's good enough, right? He thought he saw Jesus. I've, I've been saying that all well, along. Well, he look, thought he saw Jesus. I'm not expecting— but I'm asking why you, don't why you don't believe him. Why, why do you think Paul's wrong? Why don't I think a person got raised from the dead? Yes. Oh. Why, why don't you think Jesus got raised from the dead? I don't think anybody got raised anybody. from the dead. Okay. I, because it's a, it violates the laws of nature. Okay. Okay. I mean, so you have the k kind of a materialist, fundamentalist view Well, of, let me ask this. Of, you, I mean, of, you think God raised Jesus well, from the dead, yeah. right? Do you think God can break the laws of mathematics? Can God, God make can't this contradict himself, no. No, Because right. he, he is... Exactly. It, mathematics is his language. That's right. Mm -hmm. The other language he uses is physics. Hmm. Can he break the laws of physics? I mean, I think we're getting off. <laughs> well, no, we're no, we are not. Being, this is precisely. You well, asked me why I don't believe it. Well, and the reason I don't believe it is because it violates the laws oh, of oh, physics. Well, and I don't well, think he can God, feed things into his system for sure. I don't think God can break the law of physics any more than he can break the law of mathematics. Feeding things into his system to bring a dead person to life is not the same thing as making two plus two five. That's it's, completely different things. Uh, they are both laws that have never been broken in history. Except in the case of Jesus, right? <laughs> so here's the question. This is a very big, no, it's a very big question. Because what you're arguing is that the most probable event that happens with Jesus, because Paul and Peter said it happened, the most probable thing is the violation of a law of physics that has never been violated for in 13.8 billion years. Never. Except in this one instance. Well, now, if you're a historian, historians don't argue that something that happened only once in all of history is the most probable occurrence because somebody said it happened. Unless there's an incredible evidence. To the incredible evidence it, it, is that Paul said so. Not just well, that. Not just that. We're but, just getting but, started. But what's interesting here for me, Bart, though, is that presumably on the face of it, if, if you do believe that God would never, if there is a God, let's say, that that God would never break the laws of physics, then on the face of it, you could no amount of evidence could persuade you of a miraculous claim. You, you've kind of decided that before you come no, to no, the No, no, you'd text. have to. What is, you'd is have to fair? do is you'd have to have evidence from physicists that these laws don't apply. Okay, so you'd have to go to the physicist rather than you the historian. You certainly could prove it because physicists. So we need to go to the physicists for the evidence. Well, 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 if you're going to say that the laws of physics have been broken one time in the history of the human race, then you need pretty good evidence, and the evidence that somebody said they saw somebody. But it's that's not, not the real. only evidence, and we're going to talk about more. But that's not the only evidence. We're, we're, we were talking about the appearances, and the appearances, I think, and, and you've said this, I, and I've appreciated you said this in how, Je in, in how Jesus Became God. You talk about how, basically, the evidence is consistent with if Jesus did rise from the dead. Let's and I appreciate that, because if, you're saying if Jesus rose from the dead, basically, the evidence we have looks, looks the same. It would look the same. So you don't believe he rose from the dead, but the evidence does... Let me support put it like the miracle. This. Let Do you agree with it, that? Let me no. Let me no. Of course I don't. Well, well, okay. Consistent with the miracle. Let let me. Is it consistent let, with the miracle? Let me put it this way. Um, there is a famous Jewish holy man, Baal Shem Tov, mm -hmm. who um, eyewitnesses have told us uh, lived in the 18th century. He told us they can. He could heal the sick. He could uh, cast out demons. He could raise the dead. Uh, we have eyewitness accounts of this, and my suspicion is that you don't think it really happened because you'd be suspicious of those reports. I, I think the fact that nobody outside of Hasidic Jews think it happened is quite Okay, who outside of Christians think that Jesus was raised from the dead? Uh, Pinkus Lapid. 
he was a Jewish historian and scholar. <laughs> He wrote a book called The Resurrection of Jesus. You should read it. It's actually really good. He actually was convinced by the evidence that Jesus uh -huh. rose from the dead. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. You should read it. I, it's really I mean, good. I, guess, I guess he the point is, if you come to believe that Jesus has been raised from the dead physically, it's quite likely you will become yeah. a Christian. So and, if you believe, people, and if you believe in miracles who, of Baal Shem Tov, but, then, you, then you become a and also, Jew. And I also point out so, there but are... It's, so that is an evidence okay. that Baal Shem Tov really did these things because somebody believes and then converts. And it's, it's yeah, not evidence. I, and I would also add that there are scholars that, that I appreciate, people like... E.P. Sanders, I know you, you, you respect E.P. Sanders, like in Jesus and Judaism, the way he ends is basically saying, I don't know what happened. Yeah. So, but, but he admits the evidence is pretty strong. As you There's people that admit the evidence is strong, but they still I guess, don't go all I guess, the way. I guess that's, my that's question is... I think the evidence, though, is, is strong. I don't think if, that's... If you, well, you haven't cited any... All you've cited so far are eyewitnesses. I, I mean, and you've agreed that eyewitnesses in other cases don't work for you, and just, and just, including Baal Shem Tov. And so I'd like to know why do you choose some eyewitnesses well, again, over others? Again, nobody, th this goes back to Moroni. Nobody outside, Mor nobody outside of those few people believed Moroni appeared to them. Nobody outside of uh, certain Hasidic Jews believed that Baal Shem Tov did okay. miracles. How about Mormons? How about Christians? How about Mormons? I just said, nobody believes those miraculous claims happen outside. Yes, well, nobody, nobody outside of the Christian faith thinks that Jesus is the Son of God who was raised from the dead. No, no, no. But pe like Paul, for example, is an enemy that got convinced that Jesus rose from the dead. Who is, said, the, who is the Paul for Bel Shem Tov? Tell me who he is. Uh, well, there are a lot of Hasidic Jews who didn't start out as Hasidic Jews who read these okay, stories. But who's, and but who's a Paul? Who's someone who was persecuting the Hasidic Jews and then got convinced by the Bel Shem Tov miracles? Um... You bring I don't all these think, people up, but it's insane. I mean, Jesus is completely unparalleled, completely exactly. different than That's, all these rest. You are a Christian. You've always been a Christian. You, of course you think that Jesus is the greatest thing ever. And so I, I understand You've almost that. said that, that you think Jesus is the most compassionate, the most influential, you know, amazing person. You know, you've no, said I don't that think he's, he's close to that. No, I don't know. But so you, you're in the Christian tradition, and you want to show that you're right. And, you know, it's okay. I that's, want to just that, demonstrate well, that Jesus is Lord because he died for our sins, and I want people to know that. Exactly. Yeah. You're a theologian, and that's fine. It's, I have no qualms with you as a theologian. What I have qualms with is you claiming that you're doing this on disinterested it's historical It's a historical ground. religion. You ha if it didn't happen in history, it didn't but happen. But if you're going it. to be a historian, you have to treat every religion equally, and not if you're giving be a, superiority to your particular but faith. But if you're going to be a you historian, raised in. you need to be open-minded to miracles. You have Yes, you're open-minded to everything. No, you should. Are I am open-minded. Yes, if if but if you, you can said show, that God, you said that the physics can't be. I did say that. I defied. No, no, you didn't. You didn't hear me. Okay. I said you're saying it happened once, once in the entire human race. How many people have lived? Three. I don't yeah. know how many people have lived on you know billions, billions. of people. Mm -hmm. There are eight billion people alive today. None of them is going to rise from the dead. How many people have risen from the dead? In your judgment, one out of you know twenty billion who have lived or something. How many people have mistaken something they've seen? How many people have had a dream that they thought was something that was real? How many people have had a vision of a deceased loved one afterwards? Millions. Right. I, so I mean, this is basically Hume, Hume's argument, isn't it? You know, against miracles. Uh, that, that I'll, essentially I'll so, far, so I'm different from Hume. Like, I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I'm saying that if you're... So you're saying a historian can discover miracles in history, then? You are saying that? Oh, I wish you wouldn't put words in my lips. Okay. Because, because I said you, you seem I to be said, closed-minded as a historian. Let me repeat it, because I don't think you heard it, okay. heard it. I'm saying that historians establish what probably happened on the past on the basis of probabilities. If the probability is one out of 800 billion or something versus one out of eight... Well, some, some, what do historians think about that? Some, do they think it's more likely that the laws of physics are broken? Even they grant, okay, laws of physics could be, they, suppose they grant that. Do they say it did happen in this one instance because we have these three people who said it happened? Or do or, they say maybe they miss saw something? Okay, Justin, and then we'll move on to your next bedrock. You fact. know, we talked about, you know, 107 billion people, you know, that have walked the planet. That's fine. Uh, out of those 107 billion people, how many of those people, those human beings, are worshipped by billions of people and called Lord and God today? Um, you know, I don't know what the number is. One. So, one. So, 107 billion. So, how many? No, how no, many no. But, those, but, but, how many of those are, have been? Let me finish. My, no, 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 no. This is my turn. This is my turn. Okay. I thought. I thought you wanted me to respond. Jesus 
is the only you person. asked me a question. Okay, okay, okay. you asked me a question. You wanted to know how many, and okay. I was trying to answer your okay. question. Okay, so um, may I answer? Tell your me question. someone else other than okay. Jesus that's worshipped right. by billions. I'm answering by asking you. Oh no, see, see, that's not you weren't answering the question. Okay, I will so, answer so the I, question. So let me at least finish my point. Seven billion. You can't say that more people worship Jesus now. Therefore, he was raised from the dead. Okay, because let me you finish. Let me finish my point. I was you, doing I'm a point. answering your question. You, answering you asked the question. me my question, okay. and I'm answering it now. Let me finish my question. You, you say 107 billion, and since more people worship Jesus now, that's evidence. No, oh, that's not what I okay, said. Okay, then I so let me finish. Okay, okay. So, so I'm saying what we have here is an extraordinary, by, by exactly what you, these exact odds that you're talking about, we have an extraordinary anomaly. We have one human being who walked this earth from the last, you know, billions of years, and, you know, hundred, however long humans have been on the earth, out of 107 billion, this one human being has, is worshipped by billions and called Lord and God. I'm saying that is an extraordinary anomaly. And so I'm saying that's something that historians would go, wow, this, that kind of is amazing. If Jesus achieved that extraordinary anomaly, one out of 107 billion on that point, maybe, it's, maybe he achieved another extraordinary anomaly. Maybe he rose from the dead. Okay, Are you really but, using that as a historical argument? I'm using it as an argument for the resurrection, whatever you want to call it. What kind of you, argument you know, would you, you call it? Well, what's well, your problem well, with the but, argument? But isn't it an extraordinary that, 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 anomaly that Jesus is worshipped by billions? How is a crucified no, man— No, it's not an anomaly at all. I wrote an entire book explaining how it happened. Okay, how does a crucified without man a, in his mid-30s, how is he worshipped by billions of people today? I mean, you don't think that that's, that's not an extraordinary anomaly? It's, it's not an anomaly. It's, it's amazing. By definition, at mathematics, one out of 107 billion. But I'll let you finish. Why okay. is— why is that proof that he was raised from the dead? It's proof that people are convinced he was raised from the dead. I said, I said it's a good argument against this idea that you were making that, oh, you're telling me only one person out of all the 107 billion rose from the dead? A historian can't say that. A, a histo that's not good enough evidence. Well, here's another point on that same person that is an, a, a, an extraordinary But you can't anomaly. explain that one. You can explain why there are so many billions of Christians in the world. It's not hard to explain but, but it, without a miraculous explanation. So why I don't understand why you're arguing this. But but they, but this single individual has had this kind of impact. Yes, That's, it's fantastic. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. So, so, so it's normal for crucified men in the ancient of world it's not that normal. are Jews it's to be worshipped by billions anomalous. and but, but lay the foundations of Western civilization. That this is normal. You you are not listening to me. Okay. The resurrection of Jesus would be a miracle of God. You can't use the fact that many people became convinced of that miracle to prove that the miracle happened. Okay. You can only use that to show that people were convinced it happened. There are other reasons people get convinced by things, other than the fact that God intervened in history. Okay, but don't you see the point that if Jesus did rise from the dead, that would be a pretty good answer to why he has had this extraordinary anomaly impact no i don't think it has any relevance to it no relevance no okay. relevance okay. i mean that's fine i mean okay let me let me put it like this okay okay so the mormon church back to the mormons for a second <laughs> uh the early christian movement from the days of paul up to when constantine converted mm -hmm. okay it grew uh if you actually just crunch the numbers like you start out just say in paul's day i mean say before it was here right after the resurrection there are like 20 people Okay, who believe in you? You got the disciples, the eleven disciples. You got a handful. Of, say there's twenty people, 20, the, twenty to three billion. Yeah. So by the time you get to Constantine, by the time he converts, there's probably five or six million Christians in the world. So if you crunch the growth rate, like you know, what would it take to get from twenty to five or six million at that time? Um, it, it it's about thirty percent every decade. Okay, uh, and so the question is, does that require a miracle? Or not, or can you explain it by natural grounds? And the Mormon Church has grown that rate since it was founded mm -hmm. by Joseph Smith. Now, I wouldn't want to say that Mormonism is necessarily true because it grew at that rate, or that the angel Moroni necessarily revealed the golden, but be, be, because it, must... it grew at that rate. If Christianity had continued to grow at that rate after Constantine, by the end of the by the end of the fourth century, there would have been more Christians than humans in the world. So the rate of growth or the number of people who come to believe in something mm -hmm. is not an indication of the miraculous beginnings of the faith. But I didn't say that. You, I'm asking you, you did not give me an extraordinary anomaly for Mormonism. I gave you an extraordinary anomaly for Jesus of Nazareth. The extraordinary anomaly is that the angel Moroni showed Joseph Smith these plates. No, but... but, but That's who, never happened before. 
But no out one of the 107 con- billion people in the world, that has never but, happened but, to but anybody. We're back to the, the same point. Nobody outside of those people believe that. Either do Moroni the billions of people who believe in Jesus. Else. The people who believe in Jesus' resurrection are Christians. Well, no, no. Skeptics and unbelievers all around the world have been convinced by the they've resurrection They've converted, of Jesus. And, yeah. and they've been converted yeah. to Mormonism. Oh, well, in Utah, yeah. No, oh, you're not hearing me again. <laughs> I know, I know. 30% growth rate. But they, they're, they're, they're working off, on that point, they're working off Christian capital. I mean, it's a, it's a cult of, of Christianity. So well, they're working off Christian capital. you could argue that Christianity capital. is working off of well, Jew, well, Jewish capital. I mean, c- can well, we... But Jewish cap, Jew, Judaism didn't spread. I, I know we've kind of wandered into this, this, this final bedrock fact, and I just want you to establish it, though, just for the listening and watching audience, Justin. Just, just talk about this, why you believe that the rise of Christianity, or as you could put it, the rise of the Nazarenes, constitutes not just, you know, a, a fact of history, but something that points towards the truth of the resurrection. Well, I think, you know, one point that I that I wanted to make that centers around that is, again, Jesus. I mean, again, we're dealing with uh, a person, not just anybody that rose from the dead, but the most influential, you know, the most sung about, the most painted, the most written about, great moral teacher, the most compassionate, the most extraordinary figure, you know, who's ever lived. Uh, and so I, I think that that's a that's an important point to make that that this is who we're saying rose from the dead, right? We're not just saying any any old Joe rose from the dead, and so again I think that that's why Jesus keeps tipping the boxes for all these extraordinary anomalies. I'm not getting it. So, I, so are you saying it's it's a combination of things? It's that yeah. they they claim that this unprecedented claim in that Jewish culture that a crucified Messiah had been raised from the dead, the apparent the fact that people truly believe they'd seen that. The fact that it happened to someone who has had this extraordinary influence on culture, uh, human yeah. rights, every, you know, everything else, and and that that movement now comprises, you know, easily a third of the world's population or whatever it is. But let me, and this okay, will help ahead. you, Bart. This will help your confusion on this. So uh, when it comes to this fourth bedrock fact, there's many lines of arguments. But let, let me give you one. I, I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. So we know what Jesus in the New Testament before he died and as the risen Jesus, I know you, you wouldn't think that he said these things as the risen Jesus, but we know what he wanted, okay? We know what, let's say, this apparition, you know, this, this supernatural coming back from the dead human being wanted. He wanted the gospel to go to all nations. He said, you know, make disciples of all nations. He said, you know, uh, you will begin here in Jerusalem, you'll go to Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And from Jerusalem, the ends of the earth, interesting, I mean, I haven't done the exact coordinates, but Maybe Papua New Guinea uh, would be like something like the the other side of the world. And interestingly, Papua New Guinea has over ninety percent of people that profess Christianity. I just I just find that amazing that it was said by Jesus in the first century on the Mount of Olives that this message will go to all nations. It's it's made it to the other side of the world. But one hundred ninety five nations. How many of those have Christians in them? So so what you, you you'll call this a happy accident, I presume. But I would say wow what Jesus wanted, what the raised Jesus wanted, actually came to fruition. And of course, to have that accomplished, it took dominating the Roman Empire. It took dominating Western civilization. It took all that. Wow. And, and this looks to me like a raised Jesus, Lord of the world, directing his church. What say you? This is, this is your view of a historical argument for the resurrection. Is that what you're saying? Is that this is I'm saying, I'm saying this is a clear counterfactual. The Christian movement didn't have to survive. Um, it could have not gone to the ends of the earth. <laughs> it could have stayed in one part of the world the whole 2,000 years, the last No, I understand years. as a Christian that this is very important No, to no, you. but even, it, you don't have to be a Christian I'm to I'm just asking that. if you see this as evidence that Jesus was raised from the dead. Was this the sort of thing that you would publish in a historical journal as an argument that Jesus was resurrected? If it's something else, it's fine. If it's your theological I'm saying it's one of the lines of evidence. I'm asking you, is this Jesus, the sort of thing you would publish in a historical journal as an evidence for what happened to Jesus' body? I would definitely publish it as something that is a line of evidence for the raised Jesus and the fact that he's Lord of the world and still directing his okay, church. Okay, so here's my view. Uh, th- it's, um, this, this is a, uh, an argument that would be convincing to people who are already convinced. It's not an argument that will make any have carry zero weight with anybody who's not convinced uh, because it's a theological argument. Uh, it's and I have I have no problems with theological arguments because they have their place. The mistake is thinking that a it's theo- a historical fact, though it's not a theological argument. Jesus made this claim in the New okay, Testament. Okay, let me finish. Okay, okay, finish what you're saying. Yeah, and then okay. you'll, I'm you'll saying. Let me say something. Yeah, we will. I'm saying 
that the argument that Christianity succeeded is not a historical argument for what happened to Jesus' body. The question of the resurrection is what happened to Jesus' body. Was it brought back to life? Now, I'm assuming you don't think it was brought back to life. You could, you know, it's easy to argue, by the way, that um, one, of the way, one of the things that happened, and what most people today would say, is that it was a near-death experience, right? He died, and, he, and so people saw him, and so that would be, that'd be another explanation. You could argue that. You could argue uh, most anything, but the, the fact that billions of people today are convinced, when you go out on your mission in Jordan and you convince somebody Okay, suppose you convince an entire household and they conv- and suppose they can convince 100 people that Jesus was raised from the dead. How does the fact that those 100 people now believe show what happened to Jesus' body? Okay, I feel like you're missing my I, 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 I just asked just, a question. I just asked just you a question. I asked well, you a question. I, I would agree with you. Ask, that doesn't prove. Okay, okay. so That's if, not what if I'm converting, saying. convincing people doesn't prove it, yeah. Then the fact so many people have been convinced does not prove it. It's not that so many people. It's not necessarily that so many people has been convinced. It's that we know what the raised Jesus desired, and what he desired, we now have twenty twenty hindsight, and we can say, look what he desired has happened. And and so so let me give you an example. If Moroni, if the writing in Mormons, if Moroni had said, I want the Mormon message to eventually dominate America and America to be completely Mormon, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And let's say mm-hmm. we're sitting at a table in some future time and mm-hmm. all of America was Mormon. Yes. It was completely Mormon. Yes. I, I would say, yeah, you know what? That looks like some, some evidence okay. that Moroni might have had, there may be something to him. Okay. So, so in the same okay. way. Let's, let's pursue that then. So let's, in the, let's pursue In it. the same way, let me finish. In the same way, if Jesus says, my gospel will go to all nations, okay. and now 2,000 years later, it has, yeah. and we could think of a hundred you know, thousands of counterfactuals where it didn't have have to do that. Yes. The Christian movement could have died and and, and disappeared. And and one of the things you point out is that there were other Jewish messianic movements which did peter out, where when the the Messiah got killed, it stopped. Uh, But your point is this was the only one in which the leader said it will go to the ends of the earth, and it actually did. I mean, as you know, know, I don't think, I I absolutely don't think Jesus said that. Of course it's in the gospel, so we could have that argument too. But But, but whoever said that... just to make the point, whoever said that, it's, it's still it still was said in the context of Christianity look, being what thousands look, of people. Look, so it's it still is, amazing claim and fulfillment. Th- I'm sorry, this is okay. not a historical argument for the resurrection. You can't claim that the rate of growth of religion is an indication of its it's truthfulness. Not rate of growth is fulfilling a specific claim that Jesus made. How do you not see that? So respond to that specific then. Jesus Bob. never made this claim. Okay. Okay. Luke. Then whoever wrote Luke and whoever wrote Acts and whoever wrote Matthew, they made the claim. Did they? Did, no. did they prove right? Were, were, were they? I think you've right? read my books. You know, I don't think that. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, whoever wrote Matthew, whoever. I'm, I'm assuming you're anonymous uh, authorship on these books. I'm saying whoever wrote them, they made these claims. You, according to you, they, they put them they on, put the, lips this on Jesus, the lips of Jesus. But no, when no. they made As these claims... As you know claims, from my books, that's never what I've said. Go, they did. Just, just explain Ma- what Matthew what, what didn't make did. this up. Matthew's living in a community that's living 40, 50, 60 years after Jesus. Okay. There have been storytellers about Jesus all along. Okay, so they he passed, got that. But, but my point, somebody made this claim. And, and it ended up on the lips of Jesus. I think Jesus made the claim. But according to you, somebody made the claim. But whoever made the claim in the first century, somehow 2,000 years later, it's been can, fulfilled. Can I, can I ask you? Who I is mean, that guy? I gotta, we got to find him. He's the genius. <laughs> okay. We're going to go to a break. Um, I, I just don't think. After, I mean, after Bart's responded. I, I would okay. just like to know if, if it was to go to the entire world, why hasn't the whole world? Con- I'm, I don't think this is a historical argument at all. This is a theological argument, which I'm happy to talk to with you about if you want to talk theology instead of history. But if that is your theology, that it had to go to the whole world, why, in your theological view, hasn't the whole world converted? Well, I think many do reject the claims of the gospel, and I think many have not heard the claims of the gospel. Why? If it was supposed to go to the whole world, why hasn't it gone to the whole world? Well, that's the thing. It has. That's the, my point. No, it's, no, no, it's no, it in- hasn't. You just said many people hadn't heard. Well, well, I'm saying, yeah, so, so, but that's what I'm saying. Based on the evidence of the last 2,000 years, do you think it will ultimately go to all? Th- we're talking about tribes that just haven't heard. I mean, we're talking about people like in South America, people We're talking in about Africa. millions of people, a billion yeah, people yeah, haven't but, heard. But, 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 well, why you know, hasn't in far away it? tribes If this is proof, things, if proof that God's think, behind it, why hasn't it happened? You based, said Jesus said it would make it happen. Why hasn't it happened? Well, let's stick with what he said. He said he's going to return, right? So will it happen before he returns? What do you think? Based on the last 2,000 years uh, of evidence? I think the answer is no. Okay. <laughs> well, look, we're going to take a break there, and we'll be back for 
the final thrilling part of this debate on whether Jesus of Nazareth rose from the dead. My guests are Bart Ehrman and Justin Bass. We'll be back in just a moment. That was the exciting part when we arm wrestled. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying the conversation? Tell us who persuaded you in our survey. Plus, register now and you'll receive the ebook of Bart Ehrman debating Peter Williams on the story of Jesus. Welcome back to The Big Conversation, final part of today's discussion between Bart Ehrman and Justin Bass. Did Jesus of Nazareth rise from the dead? It's been an exciting debate between <laughs> you two. I, I haven't sat in the middle of quite such a pugnacious uh, interaction in a little while. Excited. It's been fun. It's been fun. Look, um, final <laughs> segment. So why don't we go to one more of your particular lines of evidence from this uh, fourth fact about the rise of Christianity and why? Give, give us another one and let's let's do another few minutes with Bart on this. Yeah, thank, thanks, Justin. I, uh, I happen to be uh, writing a book on this one. This is my next book, so, so I'm, I'm interested to hear what Bart thinks about it. So th this one really has to do with the dreams and visions of Jesus, and, and really my, my passion for this uh, came as a result of my time in Jordan. So I got to actually meet uh, a number of Muslims who have had dreams of this, uh, many times they call him man in white, you know, he's, he's full of light, and he quotes scripture, and, and, you know, it's a dream or a vision, and then they ultimately they convert to Christianity. Usually they're led to a church or something, and this is happening, you know, from Muslims in Syria, from Iraq, from Jordan, from Lebanon, you know, all over the Middle East. This is kind of a phenomenon. If you talk to missionaries, it's amazing. They're even putting up signs that say, if you've seen the man in white, call this number. So it's wow. happening so right. often that, that, that Muslims are responding to that. And, and so, so it's a, an interesting thing. But as I, I've gotten into the book, what, what I'm fascinated with throughout church history is I actually have examples from every century for the last 2,000 years of people who have believed that Jesus appeared to them in some, and I do think these are separate, these are distinct from the resurrection appearances, which I think ended with Paul. But I think these are the continuation, just as we see in the book of Acts, Jesus still continued to uh, appear to Paul, like in Corinth, and encourage him and things like that. These kind of visions are happening, whether dreams or visions, and they're happening to people all over the world, almost uh, uh, every nation for the last 2,000 years. And so to me, again, this is another line of evidence that uh, Jesus rose from the dead and is still appearing to people. It goes back to what he desires. Jesus desires to seek and to save the lost. And so I think Jesus is seeking and saving... Now because even unbelievers are having these visions. I'm, I'm going to anticipate what Bart is going to say, but Bart, you can correct me. But doesn't this happen in other religions? Why, why should, this isn't exclusive to Christianity? People claim they've had all kinds of visions in other religions. Doesn't prove that the religion is true necessarily. Yeah, I would say this is unique to Christianity. And, and again, so, so I hate bringing back Moroni. I, I think we've talked about Moroni more in this <laughs> than discussion <Jesus>. than, <laughs> than any, any time Moroni's ever been talked about outside of Utah. But... Um, but, but yeah, the, the fact that Jesus is appearing all over the world, almost every nation, for the last 2,000 years to Hindus, to Buddhists, to Muslims, to Jews, and they're converting, I, I don't know of any other faith that could make such a claim. So this is, this is I think, a unique phenomenon. There, there's even, a, a, I think Bart, Bart's aware of this, because he referenced Philip Wiebe's book, Visions of Jesus, which, which I'm... Uh, had en enjoyed reading in, in preparing uh, in preparation for my book, and and he talks about how there's even a separate study in the psychological understanding of the paranormal and and of, of these type of things called Christic visions because they're so common and there there's so many this is happening so mm. often and so so that that's what what I would say is it's really truly a unique phenomenon with again the person of Jesus so this is just another line of evidence to add to all these others that we've been talking about that I think suggests this Jesus rose from the dead. Okay. But. Well, I don't really have anything to say about it. I mean, you know. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you do, but. Oh, no, I really don't. <laughs> I mean, because I don't, think it's an, I don't think it's any evidence of anything. I mean, okay. people have dreams about all sorts of things. It doesn't mean the thing is real. I mean, so I, uh, I'm i sorry. I do, I've never thought about it, studied it. I, I read this book, and it was, yeah, it was, good book, it, one. It was, very, it was very weird, very strange. I don't believe it really happened. As you know, the film disappeared. <laughs> well, well, I, yeah, I, I don't. But, yeah. but, but he interviewed, <laughs> just so you know, he, he's talking about a film that they believe they saw Jesus. I don't buy that either. Okay. But there was 32 individuals he interviewed that gave very, yeah. people no, from yeah, Canada, people remarkable. from Australia, yeah. people from America that gave powerful, I, I was okay. convinced, that but they but have the seen the fact people have Jesus. dreams and visions of, you know, something like yeah, Christ. Well, it's not true, that, it's you... not true that it only happens in Christianity, of course. Okay. Well, yeah. What other Well, it's very famous in the ancient it? world. I mean, people... Uh, in one of the one of the great healing gods of the Greeks, who's um, 
um, was Asclepius. And the way the, uh, the healing rituals worked is that there'd be a, there was a shrine of Asclepius. He was a, a divine being, a Greek divine being who, who could heal people. And people who were had a problem, they had breast cancer, or they had a maimed limb, or they had uh, cancer, they had whatever they had, uh, they were blind. They'd go to an Asclepium, it was called Asclepium, and it would, uh, and they would, um, the way it worked is you would go to sleep in there, and you'd spend the night, and Asclepius would come to the person and heal them. Uh, and we have abundant testimony, hundreds of, of uh, testimonies that this worked. Uh, and we actually have a number of these Asclepia where, that have been dug up by archaeologists that is, they're, they're actually pretty interesting because they would make uh, representations of the body part that got healed. And so you'd have their walls covered with, with breasts okay. and penises and arms and eyes and right. ears, depending on what. And, and so it was all based on uh, a dream cult. And Asclepius isn't the only one. We have all sorts of cults involving Zeus, for example. And so throughout history, of course, there have been lots of cults that claim that, that they're, uh, the person is being you know, dreamed of okay. and, and healing them. Oh, well. That is fascinating, fascinating you know, history. You know, I've learned a lot about Asclepius. But I just have to ask you, Bart, who has Asclepius appeared to lately? Uh, just last night, I had a really interesting dream. <laughs> and, you know, and it proves that Asclepius is raised from the dead because well, I dreamed about it. Let me it. ask you this. If people, <laughs> if people from all over the world started thinking that Asclepius was appearing to them, or Apollonius Septiana, or yeah. Moroni, yeah. or That'd any of them, yeah. w- wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't, wouldn't you go, wow, there may yeah, be something Yeah, that would be something. This. Yeah, that would be something. But it's happening with Jesus. I don't think so. No, 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 it's a fact that it's happening. No, it's it, not. It's, how many, it's, just a, how, it's just whether or not how many he's actually you, appearing look, to them. There are, That's 8 your billion, question. there are 8 billion people in the world. The people who have never heard of Jesus do not have dreams of him. No, uh, one of the examples in my book is Samuel Morris, a, uh, a guy from Libya, and he, he heard the voice of Jesus. He went to Taylor, I don't know if you're here, to Taylor University. They have a statue for him. They, they, they dedicated a whole hall for him. He had never heard of Jesus. He heard the voice of Jesus. He survived this tribal attack. It's an amazing story. I mean, yeah, again, it's amazing. Great. like Pincus Lapide, you know, Great. you should look into these. Great. These are powerful. Yeah. Yeah. But there, there definitely Great. are people who have never heard of Jesus, and yeah. they have these visions. They okay. have these dreams. And why do you think it doesn't? So again, I don't think this is a historical argument, but just out of curiosity, why do you think, um, why do you think it's t- taken so long? And why don't you think God? Why don't you think Jesus just appears to everybody? Well, because I I, I agree with Pascal, Blaise Pascal. He said. God isn't interested, I'm paraphrasing, but he said God isn't interested in just convincing the intellect. He wants to incline the will. Yeah, so I think he, he, want, he wants to humble us. So I, so I think oh, he, so. Wants, he wants people to not just be convinced. He could easily do that. He could do something yeah. you know, wild yeah, in the yeah. sky and okay. convince all of us. He but could if he could break you, the laws of physics. And yeah, you're, yeah, you're he could, he could do that at any that. point. But, but I think the God of the Bible, what, what, it, what I think in Jesus, they want us to humble ourselves. Okay. They want us, he, Jesus wants us to come to him and seek him with all our heart. And okay. he'll respond. So why does he show up to some people then? If he, why does he show up to some people, not others? My, my I, I don't, you know, I can't say exactly why Jesus appears to this person or not, but I would say maybe it's because that person has more open heart and they're responding in uh-huh. some way, kind of like Cornelius and Acts. You know, he's he's uh-huh. he's seeking, you know, the true God and what happens. So the fact that an Jesus, angel appears to Peter and Peter brings the gospel to Cornelius. So people with an open heart have dreams of Jesus and then they convert, and people don't, don't, and so okay. That's that's fine. That's your theological view. That's fine. I mean, it's well, a religious point of view. And, I, I, I'm just. I people, don't, I'm people saying, of other I, I, I didn't say I know for sure, but I'm just saying well, it, it's likely that it, it would. You, you have you know very well from the Bible that depending on someone's response in their heart, if they're seeking or if they're hardening yeah. hardening their heart, a I'll lot of times that, that depends on their interaction and yeah. how God is. That's fine. I mean, it's a religious true. view, and it's fine. I mean, it's not the sort of view but, that a but, historian that, would use to argue for something that think, happened in the past. But I think where where I think you are trying to tie it to something historical, Justin, is that it for, for you it, it seems to be that this happens in today's world. Let's say for Christianity, people from other worldviews and aren't having visions of the prophet muhammad here in the uk they're not having visions of i don't know yeah. if that's true uh, well people i'll say it this way people of their own religions they do have visions ah. but what but across the the the, ah. the way that doesn't happen ah. and, and, and it's amazing so, i mean you, you so can even just, you can even uh, go to google and search i've, I've done it in youtube oh well you google's can, the, tr- the one i trust especially <laughs> the internet i think you know if it, especially if you have a wikipedia page i'm there 
but you but you can't find like like Christians are not having visions of Muhammad and Krishna and and Buddha. Okay, you know, well, that, Buddhists are not having visions like, of Krishna. Look, but you're saying Muslims, Muslims are having visions of but Jesus. Muslims are, and, and here's the amazing thing: Muslims aren't having visions of Joseph Smith, and then saying, "Oh, Mormonism's true." You know, that, you that, know that doesn't, that's no, never happened. I, no, I don't know if it's true or not, and I think you know, I think that's incredible. I think it's you know. I think it's literally incredible, but I think it's incredible. I'm going to send and, my book. You're going to endorse this book. No, I am not going to endorse it. You, you, I will. Yeah. You, if you promise to let me pet for my own blurb on the back, I will definitely write okay, an okay, endorsement. Maybe, 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 <laughs> maybe I mean, obviously, but you maybe feel... I believe in freedom of speech, but not I, on my books. I mean, you, you feel that where Justin takes these arguments strays beyond the realm of history, obviously. You, you, you think that... But it, in, in any case, it strikes me that even when you go back to the things that where you were happy to agree on some of those bedrock facts, the death of Jesus, Jesus, the, um, uh, the, the, the fact that there was a claim, claim. The, the, um, the fact that their people claimed that they had, had the appearances and so on. Even so, you, you, it doesn't sound to me like that could ever amount to enough to, yeah. uh, to explain, so, so to, explain. To, 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 for a resurrection yeah. to be the explanation, because at the end of the day, people don't rise from the dead. That's what no, you're no, saying. No, 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 no. That, that, that well, seems that's, to be what you're saying. Yes, you're saying I know God, it sounds like that's what I'm saying. You can't break the law of saying. physics. People don't rise no, no, from no, the no, dead. No, no, it's not yeah. quite what okay. I'm saying. Okay, okay. go on. You've got, he, he's given five claims so far, right? The crucifixion, the uh, the unparalleled claim, as you're calling it, the appearances, the triumph of Christianity over the earth, and now dreams, okay? So of those five, I would say one of them could be considered historical evidence for the resurrection. I'm not saying Which one? The appearances. Yeah, yeah because yeah. crucifixion obviously isn't a proof of a resurrection. Right, right. Right? Well, you have to be <laughs> dead proof to be, he died. To yeah. be no, resurrected. But not, but, yeah, but, but yeah. that's not proof of a resurrection. It's just sure. proof of a death. Yeah, sure. Right? So, I mean, it's, proof, it's not proof okay. of a resurrection. And uh, unprecedented claims, uh, I don't think that's our, an argument because we, we, we cert- the, the claim was not, oh, the Messiah has been raised from the dead. The claim was, we have seen Jesus. And that claim is not unprecedented. We have lots and lots, thousands, millions of people who claim to see someone who's, who's dead, who's alive now. So that's not evidence. Um, the appearances is evidence. That, okay. that, uh, okay. But, but that, what does evidence... But, okay, but how many to, appearances would you need before you change... Way, because it, it, didn't well, no, you say... I'm, just let me get there. Okay. First. So yeah. the triumph is not evidence, and uh-huh. the dreams aren't evidence. They're not historical evidence. You might confirm you in your religious beliefs. So it's really the appearances. And so the question is... What kind of appearances would it take yeah. to convince somebody? And so the way I usually put it is this. So uh, in terms of the laws of physics, if you take a, uh, a cup of coffee, or in this country, tea, and you pour some cream in it and you stir it up, the, uh, because of the second law of thermodynamics, the cream disperses throughout the coffee or tea. And no matter how much you stir it, you can't put the cream back. Right, it, it's that the law, the law of thermodynamics. It's not a theory. It's not a hypo. It's the law of thermodynamics. That's what happens because entropy always increases in a closed system. Okay, so that's a law, and which means it's it is to our knowledge it has never been violated. Now, suppose that there's somebody who says that in 1920. Suppose you have five people. Suppose you have ten people who say in 1920, they saw a guy put cream in his coffee. And he stirred it till it dispersed, and he kept stirring, and then the cream came to the top just like that. How many historians would trust those 10 people? None. And in fact, um, not just, and it's not just, I mean, who, I wouldn't believe them. They said they saw it. Okay, they said they saw it. People say they see things that are not true. And so... If you've got something like that that has never happened, you would need more than a few people saying they saw it. Okay, that's my view. Uh, final final thoughts, and we'll we'll close this up. I was uh, if I can ask just one yeah. more question. I, I was going to throw out the the five hundred. We didn't get to talk about the five hundred. You make an offhand comment that that I, I thought was interesting. I think it's in how Jesus became God. You said there's a certain force in the argument, and so I was just curious if the five hundred, you know, claim if if that's historical. If there were five hundred people that Paul maybe knew some of them. Would you consider that some at least forceful? Yeah. I'd consider it to and, be and the same level of evidence as the thousand people who saw uh, the mother Mother Mary on a cliff, which is um, which happens is completely well documented that Mary appeared over to over five hundred people on numerous occasions, and I so I think you have to take it into account, figure out well what really probably happened, but I don't know any historian who's a non-Catholic who would say yeah therefore Mary genuinely appeared. They'd say well they saw something. 
We're running out of time, so we'll, we'll have final thoughts. So go ahead, Dustin. I would just say, you know, this has been great, and thank you, Bart, again. But I, I would just say, you know, follow the evidence where it leads. And I, I think if you look at the appearances, if you look at the what what has transpired over the last 2,000 years, and especially I think these these points that what Jesus wanted to happen has happened, the fact that Jesus is still appearing to people in, in dreams and visions all over the world, I think all this points, I mean, where there's a lot of smoke, there's a fire. And I think, you know, when you look at all the things that have happened around the world, I think we see all the smoke. It must go back to a fire. I think, I think if Bart's correct, it, it just smoke all the way down. And I don't think so. I think there was a fire. Final thought, Bob? Yeah, I think that the, um, I think the big issue in, in uh, Christian apologetics is that apologists are doing theology claiming to do history. And I have no trouble with people doing theology. I have no trouble with people believing Jesus was raised from the dead. Um, history... Is, uh, is actually two things, and I think apologists tend to get it confused, and I think that's what's going on here. The two things are history in one sense is anything that happened in the past. The other sense that history, the term of the way historians use history is what you can establish as having happened in the past, where you have evidence. And for that, you need historical arguments. You can't have religious arguments. You have to have historical arguments, just like you can't have mathematical arguments to prove philosophy, or you can't have philosophical arguments. You, there are different realms of discourse, and theology and history are different realms of discourse. If you pretend you're doing history when, in fact, you're doing theology, I just don't think it's right. And you're trying to convince people by because they don't know and they sound well that sounds like it's history no it is not history to claim that um that that something is historical requires a critical evaluation of all the sources and all the information and to establish levels of probability it isn't simply to tell people what they want to hear and say here's my evidence for it right well you can go and look for yourself in the books that have been mentioned already um justin's book is the bedrock of christianity the unalterable facts about jesus death and resurrection there are many books published by bart ehrman as well uh, where he deals with these issues as well but it's been a, a really thrilling discussion to be part of today thank you really bart. Enjoyed it. Too. thank you justin thank you and uh, good to see you hope we can do this again sometime Thank you for watching. Want more from today's conversation? Register now and you'll receive the ebook of Bart Ehrman debating Peter Williams on the story of Jesus. And tell us who persuaded you in our survey with today's show.